bit of an update on the shelf layout. I've decided to go a different route with regards to the points. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be installing DCC Concepts Cobalt SS. I'm not going to do Taurus and I'm not going to do the Pico. After looking at it, uh, it's just going to be too much drama for what I want to do in the long term. So I'll just be showing you guys what I picked up at my local hobby shop. Several reasons why I chose this. Number one, it's just a much cheaper option. Number two, it's just a lot easier. No right or wrong with this guys. It's just whatever fits your pocket and time. So I don't know if the light, I'm going to turn this. I've got my garage door open. All right. So point motor going to these. Now when you buy a box back to these, you get six point motors. Some screws. Uh, these are the little, I don't know if I can show up on the camera. These are the little um, metal pins that go into your points, point motors. And three of these to control the setup. Now, I need to do a bit of research into these, but I think one can run four points, if I'm not mistaken. And then I just give you, that's the diagram. I'll just lift that up so you guys can see. Now this thing controls everything from signaling, little push button, um, signals, push button, all you need to power this is track power in, track power out to the next one, track power, track power, you're done. Okay, so having a further look at the Cobalt SS switch machines, I've wired one up and from what I can work out, one machine can run up to three point motors at the same time on a side. However, when you press the button, all three points will move. So I don't really know how anyone will find a use for that, but I'm sure someone might. Um, I think for the most part, two point motors, sorry, two point motors working in conjunction on one channel, if you want to call it that. I think it's the the norm but it's, it'll be more common for guys to use I'm, I'm gonna do that there and I'm gonna do something similar to that there so those four points will be run by one of these a few things to mention when you take this out of the box you plug in your little point motor and switch this to run uh, that's a directional change hold on to that button and the point motor will set to zero, if you will. After that, you're ready to go. Set your points to the way you want to have them set up. They got little guide wires. They, they send you, you get all these different little packets. Sorry for the quick pan there. Don't get nauseous on me. They send you these little packets with different colored dots. And every different colored dot has got a different configuration of the, the connection rods or whatever you want to call them. So that's quite a neat feature. One thing I did find a bit um, troublesome was getting the actual point motor working properly with this. Uh, I do think part of the problem with that was I don't have a track bed. So I think my track is sitting a little bit lower than what was intended for these little switch machines. But I fixed that with a little bit of cardboard. So not a big deal, but it was a bit of a frustration. So anyways, moving on, you plug your, you get that hooked up to that, you plug that into these neat little extension wires they give you. Now if you're going to run multiple switch machines of one port, they give you this little port connection. And this is why I'm saying I think you can run three switch machines of one port or channel, because that's got a place for another little switch machine. Okay, so once you've done that, if your, if your point doesn't throw all the way, I'm just going to pick this up, uh, that's not good, hold on, I'm going to show you one way it, it isn't light, lit up like a Christmas tree. So you have these little, sorry, sorry guys, so you have these little screws right there, and you actually adjust, use them to adjust your strength of your point motor throw, or how far you want it to throw the, the point, um, like large, medium. Initially, I had my points set up to large, to the maximum, 
but I've actually now turned it down because you can hear the point motor still running even though the turnouts open or closed. So I've just dropped it down to, I think I'm setting on medium. So you have four settings and I'm on setting two if you want to call it that. I'll just show you the quick diagram. So when you do the settings, you actually see the lights there for a small point, medium point, large point, extra large point. So I adjusted this up to XL and now I've stepped it back down to medium. Another interesting thing to note is this section here is how you control your panel lights or if you want to do um, signaling all those light or all that there will be for your signaling and panel light. So this thing is powered up by 12 volt DC, uh, DC straight in like accessory bus wire and from there outwards to your next one so you can actually daisy chain these as you see fit another thing you can do is you can run your DCC straight from your track into there and out and daisy chain them that way so this thing is DC and DCC out of the box amazing piece of kit I think I paid $50 for them but I, I bought them in bulk so it's hard for me to work that out you can buy extra point motors loose and I think they work out like 20 bucks for two or something like that I'm not too sure on the prices guys but a really a great piece of kit so I'm gonna do all the points with these like I said in, uh, in the beginning of this video I'm not doing the co um, the Pico or the tortoise now the tortoise the tortoise fan guys they do have a cobalt motor I don't think there's a picture on here of that no unfortunately not but the cobalt motor is cheaper than the Taurus switch machines and it's got built-in DCC ready to go. So that's something for the guys to look at. I might do one of them just for the sake of reviewing this great product. I hope this helps. Um, I'll show you a, a, another segment where I've wired up all the points and we'll see how we go from there. Something else to note, in the instructions, installation instructions, they recommend removing these clips and removing the actual turnout springs due to longevity etc etc however what I can tell you if you don't remove those springs these things do not have enough juice to actually throw the, the turnout they just get stuck so you've got to remove those little springs otherwise it's not going to work just thought I'll add that in there as well